which best illustrate the lack of leadership and the indecisiveness of this government. If there is one sector which best characterizes the inability of this government to deliver on its promises, if there is one sector which best epitomizes the incompetence of this government, it is in the SME sector, in the small and medium enterprise sector. Madam Speaker, allow me to go down memory lane. Monday, 23rd March, 2015. Honorable Lachmi Laraidu presents the first budget of this government. Expectations are high. Everybody is glued to its TV set. Everybody is listening to the radio. The whole nation is waiting for the budget that is going to bring the second miracle, the second economic miracle. And the self-proclaimed magician pulls his latest tricks, which incidentally will be his last trick. He states, and I quote, Madam Speaker, Madam Speaker, I now come to the most ambitious goal. I now come to the most ambitious goal of this government, making the SME sector the backbone of our economy. That is what the Honorable Lachmi Naidu said. And he goes on to, say, to propose 10 measures. And the first measure reads as follows. I'm launching the Small and Medium Enterprises Bank, SME Bank, to provide seed capital to entrepreneurs without any need for personal guarantee. As I have said on several occasions, an amount of 10 billion rupees will be made available to the bank over the next five years, starting with a share capital of 200 million and a line of credit of 2 billion from government from its first year of operation. This is what this government promised. 10 billion rupees to the SME over five years. An SME bank. And we applauded this initiative. SMEs applauded this initiative because the greatest problem facing SME today is access to capital. And despite the fact that government guarantees 50% of loans to SMEs, SMEs still find it very difficult to get loans, especially SME and micro enterprise that do not have any collateral to give as security. So we were all welcoming this SME bank. But then what happened? Six months later, six months after the budget, instead of an SME bank, we are given MoBank. MoBank, where there is going to be, there was a merger of Mercer's Post and Cooperative Bank and National Commercial Bank. So at the first opportunity, Madam Speaker, I asked, it was still Minister of Finance, I asked the Honorable Lachmi Naidu, is this MoBank going to be the promise SME bank. And this is what he answered on the 8th September 2015. The mission of the bank, that is MoBank, as far as SME is concerned, <coughs> is to channel small investors the 2 billion earmark in the budget each year. Therefore, this is a specialized bank. This is what was said in this house. MoBank would be the specialized bank to channel 2 billion rupees to SME sector every year. And then, what actually happened? May 2016, one year after the budget, the Honorable Boda, Bola, Minister of Business, Enterprise and Cooperative, makes the following shocking, shocking confession in answer to a PQ. This is what he says, and I hope he's listening, because it's good that he listened to what he said in this August Assembly. He said, Madam Speaker, I wish to inform the Honorable Member that the 10 billion as mentioned in the last budget speech is to be made available over a period of five years for financing of new SME projects. But no provision has been made in the budget. This is the Honorable Minister of SME telling the world through the August Assembly that although the Honorable Lachmi Naidu has promised 10 billion rupees over five years, zero has been provided in the budget. And this is why I say this government does not live up to its promise. 
And then, my, uh, uh, Madam Speaker, that is not all. The Honorable Minister goes on to state, and I quote, I'm further informed that to date, MoBank has received, MoBank was supposed to be the SME bank, MoBank has received 20 applications from MyBees, the SME one-stop shop for financial assistance, for a total of 74 million rupees under MoBank SME finance scheme. Two, two of these applications for loan for an amount of 4.2 million rupees has already been approved and funds are being released. So one year later, Instead of the 2 billion rupees proposed, how much was disbursed by MoBank as at 3rd of May 2016? Zero cent. This is the bilan of this government. Faking, you know, showing false promises, big, big interviews, great things on TVs and radios, you know, we're doing for SMEs. We're going to help SMEs. This is the backbone of the economy. And then one year later, how much does MoBank disburse to these poor SME sectors? Zero cent. Only four million will be disbursed. This is being disbursed. And that was last year, Madam Speaker. Let is, let's see what happened this year. One year has gone by. Okay, there was steering problem. The minister is still finding his way around. Mobek is still finding his way around. And let me remind the population that this government has injected 3.7 billion rupees in Mobek. 3.7 billion rupees in that bank, which is supposed to help SMEs. So what happened one year later? This is very recent. In answer to a PQ by Honorable Backbencher, you see about, I'm sorry for you, Agubar, on the 31st of October 2017, only a few weeks ago, the Honorable Minister Bola stated that since May 2016, since May 2016, my bees has approved a number of 273 projects for a total value of how much? 1.2 billion rupees. Well done. Smeda, which is not working properly, my bees, which is not working properly, one stop shop, which is not working properly, has approved 273 projects to a tune of 1.2 billion. And if I'm not mistaken, everybody started clapping because what an achievement, you know? They approved 1.2 billion rupees. But then the Honorable Minister goes on. How much of this 1.2 billion rupees that his departments made under his ministry, how much of this 1.2 billion has actually received finance? How much of it has been approved by Mobank? This is what, and I'm sure honorable members will recall what the answer the honorable minister gave because it was only a few days ago. This is what he said. And the honorable minister is smiling because he remember what he said. This is what he said. Out of the number of 273 projects approved by my bees, MoBank approved a number of 94 projects project for a total amount of how much? Approximately 274 million rupees. And we're talking approval. We're not even talking about disbursement. We're not even talking about how much money has been paid to these SMEs. So we have Smeda working hard, toning, coming up, approving project, 1.2 billion rupees of project, which the Honorable Minister thinks they are not doing anything, they need to be stopped, because they're doing so bad a, uh, a job, approving only 1.2 billion rupees of project. And then when it goes to Mobile, what happened? Not even 25%, not even 25% of these projects are approved. That is the achievement of this government and then they're blaming Smeda for their incompetence. When fine, what's not wrong? How is it that Smeda is approving, using the same criteria, approving 1.2 billion rupees of project, and Mobek is not even disbursing 25% of the amount that has been approved. So, Madam Speaker, let, let, let us recap. This government announced in 2015 that they will be providing 5 billion, 10 billion rupees in five years. So after two and a half years, that's around five billion rupees that had to be injected in the SME sector. And instead of five billion rupees, not even 300 million rupees. That's 6%. We're talking about not even 
not even 10% of what this government had promised to the SME. Not even 10% of the 10 billion rupees, of the 5 billion rupees, have been disbursed. And they're blaming SMEDA. They're blaming SMEDA for incompetence. They need to scrap SMEDA. They need to get rid of all the staff. You need to get rid of the minister. You need to get rid of this government. You can't come here, make us vote a budget, and then you don't disburse after two and a half years. Madam Speaker, this is why, you know, when I hear things like SME sector was supposed to be the backbone of our economy, SME sector was supposed to bring the second economic miracle. Madam Speaker, in Mauritius term, it's called fail avec un grand F. But what is worse, Madam Speaker, is that this government does not have a clue, does not have a clue what to do with SMEs. They started, and the minister again today, they started by blaming SMEDA. The minister in November 2015 said exactly what he said today in this house. There's too much staff, too many non-technical staff. We need to reduce non-technical staff. This is the problem. Too many technical staff, that's why we're not able to disburse 5 billion rupees to the SME. Too many non-technical staff, 75%. This is what he said. This is in Hansard, November 2015. Okay, fair enough. There's too many staff. What have you done? What has the ministry done? November 2015, there's too many staff. In 2016, did you do anything? 2017, did you do anything? In November, after two years, now you're saying, the same problem? Did you at least carry out an HR audit and find out, you know, where these people can be redeployed without having to change the law? If there is any vacancies in the ministry, if they need a, a secretary, they need an HR manager, they need an accountant, we can deploy it. Two years and you didn't do anything? Madam Speaker, the, then after blaming the SMEDA, the Honorable Prime Minister, who has left, he was the third Minister of Finance, presenting the second budget of this government, stated in that budget speed at pay paragraph 352. First, the supporting institution in the SME sector, namely SMEDA, Enterprise Mauritius, and National Women Entrepreneur Council, will be merged into one organization for greater coherence, more efficiency, and effectiveness. So now we're no longer having the problem of SMEDA having too much staff. The problem of SMEDA is there's too many organizations dealing with SME. You have SMEDA, you have Enterprise Motions, you have National Women Enterprise Council. So last year, the Honorable Minister, then Minister of Finance, stated that we need to merge all of these three organizations. That was last year. That was applauded, voted. The minister defended this position. One year later, what happened? Has there been a merger? To have the SMEDA, Enterprise Mauritius, and National Women Entrepreneur Council merge? No. Do we know why it was not merged? Did anyone care to enlighten the House by way of statement why the government is doing a U-turn? Did the Honorable Prime Minister say, why I'm, whatever I said in my budget, well, forget it? Did, they, did the Honorable Minister come and explain to us why last year he was telling us that we need to merge this organization? This year he has decided we should not merge this organization? Why? And we know, Madam Speaker, because a few weeks ago we voted for the Economic Development Board. So now we know that the Board of Investment, Enterprise Mauritius, MS, uh, and the Mauritius um, financial Services Promotion Agency will fall under the Economic Development Board. But why not SMEDA? Why shouldn't SMEDA fall under the Economic Development Bank? Why shouldn't the Women Entrepreneur Council also fall under the uh, Economic Development Bank, Board? This is a new state body. If you wanted to have greater coherence, more efficiency as it's and effectiveness, as to quote the words of the Honorable Prime Minister, why couldn't you put these? Do you need to scrap SMEDA? You couldn't put it under the Economic Development Board? That was last year, Madam Speaker. Now this year, this year's budget. 
Like every year, the Honourable Minister of Finance comes with a number of measures to you know, revamp the SME sector, measures which up to now has not been implemented, of course. And then at paragraph 164, this is what the Honourable Minister of Finance announces. We need a fundamental institutional reform to better support the SME sector. Hang on, that's exactly what he said last year. We need to reform the sector. He didn't do anything for one year. So one year later, he comes with a budget and say again, like, you know, disrayé, we need a fundamental institutional reform to better support the SMEs. And as recommended in the 10 years master plan for the SME sector, SME Mauritius will be set up to replace MEDA. Ah, that's the holy grail. Now, for the first time in the budget, we are told MEDA will be replaced by SME Mauritius. Why? Because we have to implement the 10-year master plan. Fair enough. And today, Madam Speaker, this is the purpose of this bill, to replace the SMEDA by SME Mauritius. And this is one of the objects of the bill. But let us compare, Madam Speaker, SMEDA with SME Mauritius. Let us see if we are moving forward or we are leaping backward. Let us see if, like the Honourable Minister has just mentioned, we are taking bold initiative, we are doing a destructive approach, or we are doing backward. We are going backward. So, first of all, the Honourable Minister did not say one word one word in his intervention about what would be this SME Mauritius like. It is going to be a private company. This is in the, uh, in the experimental memorandum. In fact, it has already been set up, Madam Speaker. So today, the board, SMEDA, has a board. SMEDA is a parasitical body. SMEDA is governed by the Small and Medium Enterprise Development Act. Authority Act of 2009, SMEDA Act. SMEDA Act provides for objects of the, uh, of the of SMEDA, object, and uh, provides for, you know, the functions. And then it talks about the board. Extensively, what is the composition of the board? Very important. The board of SMEDA today, statutorily, consists of representatives of various ministries, then representatives of the National Women's Entrepreneurial Council, representatives of SME, representative of a private sector in business. And then MEDA Act provides that a board member cannot, cannot be actively engaged in politics. That is MEDA. Very clear objective criteria as to who can sit on the board of SMEDA. Now let's see SME Mauritius. SME Mauritius is a private company. It is governed by its constitution and by the Companies Act. Who will sit on the board? Representative of ministries? Who? Is there anywhere in the bill telling us who will sit on the board of uh, SME Mauritius? Is there anything in this bill telling us what would be the qualification of the person who will sit on board of SME Mauritius? No, Madam Speaker. It is the minister who will decide. He can appoint whoever he wishes. He can appoint people who, for example, are being prosecuted for corruption. He can appoint people who are on bail for criminal offenses. He can appoint people who are subject to inquiry before the Commission of Inquiry on Drug Trafficking for their alleged connection with drug laws. He can appoint people who charge fees from Korean investors to take pictures with the Prime Minister. He can appoint relatives of ministers, relatives of ministers Petit Copin, Petit Copin. The minister is smiling, but in fact, he has absolute power. This is the difference between SMEDA Act, which tells you who can sit on the board, and SME Mauritius. And that is what the Honourable Minister talks about, bold initiative, very bold indeed taking away what statutorily we knew would be the condition of SMEDA, replacing it 
with people that the honorable minister can pick and choose at his whims and fancy. And once he has chosen these people, his people to sit on the board, he will have an absolute menace on that board. And the board will dance to his tune because if he don't agree with the honorable minister, he can fire them, he can replace them. Now, what will be the fees charged by the board? Do we know who is going to charge these fees? It's not going to be fixed by a PRB report. Oh no, this is a private company. The private company, you know, we're not bound by PRB. <laughs> the minister decides, the board decides. Is this good governance? Is, this, is it what the government means when he's saying that we're having a modern legislative framework? We're replacing a statutory parastatal body by a private company? Now let's move to the finance, Madam Speaker. And that's made an act. And that's made an act, the board is required to prepare annual report and audited statement. They're required to give a copy to the Honorable Minister. The Honorable Minister is required to deposit, to lay before the National Assembly a copy of that report. Now whether they have been doing it or not is a different matter, because as a matter of fact, they have not been doing it. This government has never, as far as I know, deposited any copy of the report the audited accounts of SMEDA before this assembly. But at least there is a legal obligation for them to de deposit their accounts. And the national audit can audit, can scrutinize SMEDA. The public accounts committee can scrutinize the finance of SMEDA. Honorable members of parliament can scrutinize MEDA and ask questions and find out what has happened to the finances because we need, we vote every year a sum of money to SMEDA. We can ask questions, we can scrutinize the use of funds. But now what will happen when we're going to have SME Mauritius, mm. this private company, this bold initiative of the Prime Minister, this destructive approach? What are we going to have? We're going to have a private company this private company will file its audited account with the uh, registrar of companies. The director of audit will not be able to investigate its activities. The public accounts committee will not be able to investigate its activities. MPs will not be able to ask questions about SME Mauritius. Because we all know, Madam Speaker, what happened when we honorable members try to question what is going on in companies. What does he and his honorable colleagues answer to us? Okay? When we ask, how many times do you ask in this house, Madam Speaker, each time we ask a question about Air Mauritius. No, you can't. It's a public company. Each time we question the minister about the fiesta Majakaro that is going on in Mauritius Telecom. No, you can't. This is a private company. Each time we ask questions about duty-free at all, airport of Mauritius, recruitment of uh, employees, giving contracts to particular No, you can't. These are private companies. No, 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 you can't. This is for the board to decide. We MPs are not allowed to ask questions. And now what is going to happen when next I will ask a question about SME Mauritius? What will be the answer? No, you can't. SMEDA, yes, you could. SMEDA, you could ask whatever question you, can, you could. But SME Mauritius, no, no, private company directed by its board. This is what this government means by we're taking a bold initiative. Total opacity on the financing of SME Mauritius. But then, what, what does this government have to hide? Why? This is public funds. We vote the funds in the budget. We give it to SME Mauritius. Why don't you make it public? Why can't we ask questions? Why should it be a private company? So maybe the government doesn't want us to know how generous SME Mauritius will be with other people's money. But SME Mauritius will be funded by public funds, taxpayers' money, and representatives of these taxpayers will not be able to ask any question, will not be able to ascertain how the funds are utilized, are wasted. And this is what this government is talking about, modern legislative framework, bold initiative. And Madam Speaker, what makes me even more smile is when I look at the explanatory memorandum, it there says that 
SMEDA, uh, the object of this bill is to repeal SMEDA Act and to replace it by a modern, more business friendly. More business friendly. Business friendly for whom? For SMEs? No, business friendly probably for what my honorable colleague, honorable Bagwan, like to say for Chor Mahachor. Madam <laughs> Speaker, yes, I stand by every word that I said. There will be total opacity about the finances of SME Mauritius. And every year we will vote in this house an amount of money for SME Mauritius, but no one will be able to ask any question about how this fund has been used or misused. Madam Speaker, today SMEDA is subject to the Public Procurement Act. Their name appears in part two of the schedule. And I, and I pose here, Madam Speaker, to draw the attention of the House and the, the Parliamentary Draft Plan to a major drafting mistake in this bill. If we look at clause 15, subsection 5D of the bill that has been circulated, the Public Procurement Act is amended in the schedule in part two by deleting the following item, small enterprises and handicraft development authority. This is wrong, Madam Speaker. It should not be small enterprises and handicraft development authority. It should have been uh, SMEDA, small and medium enterprise development authority. Why? Because if we look at the SMEDA Act of 2009, if we look at section 35, subsection one, which has already come into effect by proclamation on uh, 29th January 2010. So if we look at section 35, subsection one of the SMEDA Act, it says, and I quote, the Public Procurement Act is amended in part two of the schedule by deleting the following items, small enterprises and handicraft development authority, and by inserting in the appropriate alphabetical order the following new item, small and medium Enterprises Development Authority. So this small enterprise and handicraft development authority has already been deleted and repealed from the uh, schedule. Now, if we are going to vote this bill, then section 15, subsection five of this bill should read uh, SMEDA in, spread, uh, in uh, um, being the, the authority that is deleted in part two. So Madam Speaker, Today, SMEDA is a public body. SMEDA is subject to the Public Procurement Act. What does that mean? It means that today, if SMEDA is going to award any major contract, it has to follow all the procedures set out in the Public Procurement Act. And if he doesn't follow all these procedures, any unsatisfied bidder can appeal to the independent review panel can have the decision stay, the decision reversed. So there is a judicial control over the award of any major contract by SMEDA. But with this bold bill, with this destructive approach, what are we going to have? We're going to have SME Mauritius, which is not a public body, which is a private company, which is not even an exempt organization. At least the honorable Vice Deputy Prime Minister when he came with the amendment for the subsidiaries of CEB. He came and he said that he agrees that CEB subsidiaries, even if they were private companies, they should fall under the Public Procurement Act. And he said, he brought an amendment to say that these subsidiaries of CEB would be exempt organizations. But not SME Mauritius. SME Mauritius would fall carrément en dehors Public procurement, board, public procurement act. Total opacity. No one will be ever able to challenge any contract awarded by SME Mauritius. They can do whatever they want with the money. The board is sovereign. They can award contract to Petit Copain, to Petit Copain, to family, to relative. They can do whatever they want. It will not be scrutinized. 
no bidder, unsatisfied bidder will not be able to challenge them. It will not be subject to judicial review because it's not a public body. It will not be able to go to the independent review panel. And this is what this government wants to do. Transfer, scraps made out, replace it with SME merchants. And not a word. And this is what I find shocking, Madam Speaker. Not a word from the Honourable Minister as to why he wants to have SME Mauritius as a private company, why he wants SME Mauritius to fall outside the realm of the Public Procurement Act. <laughs> no, stuff. No, no stuff. <laughs> now stuffing. The Honourable Minister, and I'm happy that he said that he's giving the assurance to the House that these, all these employees, 104 employees, will be employed or redeployed. So if we look at uh, Clause 16, uh, Madam Speaker, there are three options, three options available to the staff, the 104 staff of SMEDA. First, they can be transferred to at the option. That is what is very important. It is the staff that is going to uh, decide. Okay? Every person who is employed on permanent establishment of SMEDA can opt to be transferred to SME Mauritius or to be redeployed or to retire. So three options. Now let's take the first option. What happens, Madam Speaker, if all these 104 members of staff decide to opt to be employed by SME Mauritius? What happens? The law says that it is their option. They have to be offered same terms, new terms and conditions, which is not less favorable. So what happened? What happened to our excess non-technical staff? What happened to the ratio of 65-35? It'll be the same thing. SMEDA will ha would have 104 staff. SME Mauritius will have 104 staff. This is what Section 16.3a says. Every person may opt to be transferred to SME on new terms and conditions which are not less, not be less favorable than those of his previous employment. It is the option of the staff. But we know, Madam Speaker, that a lot of staff would not want to be transferred. I mean, who would want to leave a parastatal body governed by PLB, where they have security of tenure, and go to a, sp a, a private company which they can be hired and fired at the winds and fences of the board for anything and lose all their acquired rights. I mean, no, no one with a sensible mind would want to leave establishment to go and work to a private company. So what is more likely to, be, to happen, Madam Speaker, is a lot of these uh, staff will opt to be redeployed. They would opt to be redeployed. But that is where the problem lies. Because when we look at the, when we look at the act, what is the proposed bill saying? The proposed bill is not saying that they will be redeployed <coughs> to other ministries. They say, it is said they will be redeployed so far as is practicable, one, so if it is not practicable, no redeployment, and two, where vacancies in a similar position are available. So the deployment is subject to two conditions. One, it must be practicable, and two, there must be availability. And I'm sure, in his summing up, the Honorable Minister will come up and give us a list of available uh, position. I'm sure that he must have discussed it with uh, the Honorable Minister of uh, Civil Service, and he has already come up with a list of all vacancies in parastatal bodies which can absorb these, uh, these members. Because he gave the undertaking that all the staff, he said it himself, all the staff would be retained. So it means that you need to give them the deployment. And the Honourable Minister said that he received the staff. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. But what he didn't say, why did he receive? He only received them after Mr. Jacques Bislal, the appointed negotiator, made a complaint to the Ministry of Labour, Industrial Relations and Employment. And it is the Ministry of, Industri of Labour, Industrial Relations and Employment who convene a conciliation meeting and ask the Ministry to hold meetings with the staff. But anyway, the, the uh, Minister has given an undertaking that all the staff will be 
employed or redeployed, I'm sure that he will keep up his, uh, his word for the staff. Now, Madam Speaker, the last point and the best point. Madam Speaker, the Ministry of SME has paid millions of rupees, millions of rupees to a consultant and Petrek Mauritius to come up with a 10-year master plan for SME sector in Mauritius. This MPTREC has, they're so efficient, they provided two reports. One full report, and for lazy people like myself, an abridged version of the 10-year master plan. And this 10-year master plan went to cabinet on the 24th of March, 2017, and cabinet took note of the master plan and of its recommendations. That is why the Honourable Prime Minister, in his budget speech today, he said that as recommended in the 10-year master plan for SME sector, SME Mauritius will be set up to replace SMEDA. See, it's clear. We are going with SME Mauritius because we are implementing the 10-year the recommendation of the 10-year master plan. This is what I heard the Honourable Prime Minister say, and I haven't heard anything from the Honourable Minister to tell me otherwise. In fact, he himself quoted this part of the budget speech again in his speech. Okay, but now let's see what actually the master plan recommends. This is at page, this is at uh, paragraph 7.5 under the heading Rationalize and Improve SME Support, Set Up SME Mauritius. First, it recommends that SMEDA Enterprise Mauritius and National Women's Enterprise Council be merged into one organization. Then it goes, and this is the material part. <coughs> this merger, that is merging uh, SMEDA Enterprise Mauritius and National Women Enterprise Entrepreneur Council, this merger will inevitably lead to the creation of a new high-powered multi-capabilities institution, hereinafter <laughs> referred to as SME Mauritius. To avoid previous mistakes, to avoid previous mistake, the master plan recommends, this is what the master plan recommends, to avoid previous mistake, the master plan recommends that SME Mauritius should be incorporated as a parastatal organization with a board constituted equally of private and public sectors representative and has a clear mandate to provide targeted and differentiated support to SME. This is what the 10-year plan, master plan recommended, the setting up of SME Mauritius as a parastatal organization, not as a private company, not as an opaque company, not like an, a company which we will not be scrutinized, not like a company which will fall off, uh, outside the Public Procurement Act, not a, comp a private company which will not be audited by the National Audit, not a private company which will not be answerable to Public Account Committee, not a, public, a company which will not be subject to any question from this House. This was not recommended. This was not approved by Cabinet. This was not in the budget speech. What happened in the middle? What happened between the, the budget speech and today? Why is it that we are being told that we are implementing the 10-year master plan? Why is the whole nation being told that SME Mauritius E has been recommended by this 10-year master plan and then hide to the nation that what was recommended is a parastatal body and what is before this house is a private company? Why? Not a word, my, Madam Speaker, not a word. And the Honourable Minister say this is the board initiative of the Prime Minister. The Prime Minister was not even here. His name was taken. This is what he said. This is a board initiative of the Prime Minister. So do I take it that it was a decision of the Prime Minister to convert the SME Mauritius from a parasitic body to a private company? We are talking about public funds here. We are talking about funds. We're talking about opacity. 
We're talking about accountability. Nothing. And we're going to vote this. Madam Speaker, Madam Speaker, it is not, unfortunately, it is not, unfortunately, an innocent act. It is not an innocent act. I'm afraid it is not an innocent act. SME Mauritius was incorporated on 14 July 2017, even before this bill came before this House, even before the bill has been approved, even before the people has decided to scrap SMEDA to replace it by SME Mauritius, SME Mauritius has already been set up. And not only that, Madam Speaker, not only that, okay, the CEO of that company has already been appointed. Huh? Would you believe it? The CEO of this SME company, which has not been approved yet, which doesn't have a budget yet, it has not been budget. And, and you know who, Madam Speaker, you know who has been appointed? You know who has been appointed? On 15 September 2017, Cabinet took note that the Board of SME Mauritius, Board controlled by the normal minister, has appointed Mr. Rajendra Perdu as Chief Executive Officer. Who is he? He was the former Chief Operations Officer of my bees for one month or so. He was suspended by SMEDA Board following allegation of conflict of interest when he worked for Mobec under the Mauritius Business Growth Scheme. Of course he was cleared by ICAC, but who trusts ICAC? Who trusts ICAC? But is he a fit and proper person? The law has not been passed. We have not even voted the law. He has already appointed the CEO. The same guy who was the COO. As a CEO, he was earning half of the salary that now he's going to earn. The, <laughs> the application was almost tailor-made for him. He doesn't have 10 years experience dealing with SME sectors, so therefore the uh, appointment was done for someone with five years qualification. Yeah. And this is not all, Madam Speaker. The minister did not stop there. Yeah. Did not stop there. You know, they had, they had the nerve. This is what the nerve that they have. A, a bill that has not yet been passed. Bill has not been passed, okay? This is, what, this is an extract of the board of SMEDA. SMEDA on the 31st October, 31st October 2017. The board took, the board of SMEDA, the board took cognizance and noted a proposal from the parent ministry, Mr. of SME, the parent ministry for management to make the necessary arrangement, SMEDA management to make the necessary arrangement to provide free office space to SME Mauritius Limited within its premises in Popenisi, Port Louis. SMEDA is still here. Now SMEDA is being requested. Before this bill comes before this house, the ministry is asking SMEDA, please give way to our CEO. The CEO needs to have a car, he needs to have a car park, he needs to have an office. Who is going to pay? I don't know. How he's paid? I don't know. Because there's no funds. We haven't voted any funds yet for SME Mauritius. So we now, so now, Madam Speaker, we have two CEOs. We have two CEOs. We have a CEO for SMEDA, Mr. Siavan Singh, who is on the, on the leave. And then we have a second CEO for uh, SME Mauritius. And I salute the board members, Madam Speaker. I salute the board members and I quote what they say. In light of above discussion, board of SMEDA unanimously held the view that the request by the parent ministry was highly inappropriate and grossly unethical. Bravo, Smeda. Grossly unethical, highly inappropriate. Now, the bill has not been passed yet. We have not scrapped Smeda yet. We have not replaced it by SME Mauritius yet. And this is what we are seeing. Unethical conduct. Now imagine after this board, after this SME Mauritius come into force. What will happen? What would happen? And this is what this government is hailing as 
the new magic grail for the SME sector? Madam Speaker, Madam Speaker, I'm not sure if this, I'm not sure if what I'm going to say is parliamentary, but this whole thing stinks. I'm sorry to say it. It stinks. It's not bad enough that this government, this government's policy as far as SME is concerned has been a total and utter failure. Now the government is bent on hiding the incompetence behind a private company. Madam Speaker, today truly marks a darkest day in the governance of SME sector. With this bill, a curtain, with this bill, a curtain of opacity has come down on the SME sector. Thank you.